Hey, welcome back to Lick the Week videos. We're still continuing in the uh, Understanding Licks and how they're used series. Um, the previous couple of videos established what licks are and what they aren't. Uh, and then we looked at one of the ways to use licks, which is just filler. In this video, I'd like to go a little further and look at the next step in your evolution as a banjo player, and that would be using the standard licks that you know as substitute for melody. Now we use the song Worried Man Blues because I always like to use uh, vocal songs as the uh, example tunes. They're easy to remember, they don't have many notes, and you can hum it and sing it. Instrumentals have a lot of notes, they're really hard to sing. And it's not that you can't use licks in instrumentals because we hear that all the time, but it's really hard to understand exactly how you're using licks in instrumentals as opposed to vocal tunes, I think. So let's stick with the vocal tune theme. I'm going to continue with the song Worried Man Blues. Now, the first job in using a lick as substitute for melody is you have to decide how much of the melody you want to reproduce with the lick and how closely that lick matches the actual piece of the melody that you're trying to replace it with. So what we need to do is look at the song again. Now, before we used these licks as filler as backup, and we didn't really do a solo for Worried Man Blues, so I'm going to do the same thing here in the first part of this video and then we'll go a step above. What I'll do is I'll play a solo for Worried Man Blues that has melody and then we'll try to use some of the licks as filler in between melody because we're still going to have those same spaces. So let's go to the melody and I'll play a melody oriented solo instead of just back up this time. It takes a worried man to sing Now that's the G section uh, of the song Worried Man Blues, if we do it in G. Now, if you'll listen, you'll hear the melody notes. It takes a worried man. And then as the word man kind of trails off, or if there's a space there where the vocalist stops singing, man, if he decides to shorten the duration of the note, you can still use the standard filler licks, uh, not just as background music, but as part of your solo but it's still considered filler because the melody is just the notes that you would sing so what you have to be good at as a banjo player is finding the melody notes inserting them into roll patterns to make a melody solo of the left hand to spice that up. So that you still have the melody intact. But you notice I didn't have any filler licks in that solo. So that's one of the uses that we've talked about, but we looked at it in a previous video more from uh, a backup, you know, system. Now let's look at it from playing the melody and using them as filler. So I won't do the whole song, but you'll kind of get the gist if you think about it of what I'm talking about. Is you still want to play the solo, and then in the spaces, you will insert some kind of standardized lick that fills that hole. Now if you go a step beyond that, you'll be talking about what we're trying to cover here in this video, which is I want to actually use the lick and try to capture the melody with the lick. That's a different idea than using the lick as filler. Because when you fill, you've already used the notes of the melody in your solo. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. So what happens there is you've reproduced the melody, you've inserted those notes into your roll pattern so that you have a melody break and any spaces between the notes can be filled with standard, in this case, G licks for the G section of the song. When you go to C and if you go to D, the same thing happens. You reproduce the melody notes, you can emphasize them with the ornaments, and then wait for those spaces to put the licks in. Now what we're trying to do here is a step above that, which is to actually find licks that we can substitute for melody. Now how do you know a lick will work for melody. Well, some of it is 
ear training and its experience, if I can spit it out, experience will tell you after a while and your ear will tell you that there's a lick in G that may fit part of that melody. And sometimes it's just trial and error on your part that you just keep trying licks and you find one that sounds close to the melody. Now why is it that those notes may sound like melody? Well, the notes of the melody usually correspond to just a few notes out of the scale that you're working in. So if you're playing in the key of G, you're probably using G scale notes for the most part for these simple vocal songs. So Worried Man Blue, Blues will have just a handful of notes out of the G scale that relate to the key of G. And licks also use some of the same notes. So what you're looking for is notes from licks that match notes of melody somehow. Sometimes it's really fortunate that you'll find a lick that reproduces that little piece of the melody pretty closely and other times there'll be notes in the lick that sound kind of like the melody but not exactly but enough that it works you know so let's do that now let's try to take that same solo and see if we can find some kind of Scruggs lick that we can substitute for just individual melody notes so I'll cut and paste like you do on the computer I'll cut out a section of the melody and paste in a lick that I think sounds similar to the part that I'm cutting out. And why would you do that? Well, that's a common question you might get is, okay, why not just play the melody? Why even insert a lick at all? Even though that lick sounds like melody, what's the purpose? Well, you want to reproduce the melody, but sometimes you want to go a step above it and make it the solo more exciting. You want it to sound more like a real Scruggs style banjo player in this case. So you need to use licks in the right way. You want to keep most of the melody intact so people know where you're at in the song. They know what you're playing, what part of the song you're playing. But there's nothing wrong with using a lick, especially a lick that has similarities to the melody. Because it just makes your solo sound, you know, better. <laughs> so let me try this. Okay, you notice I use I use one of these real commonly heard Scruggs licks. It's probably one of the most common Scruggs licks. Now I didn't use it as filler between melody. I actually spliced that lick into the flow of the melody. It takes a worried man to sing Now you may have noticed that that lick has similarities to the vocal melody. Sing, sing. But it had notes that weren't in the melody, like this E note. Sing, worried, worried. So it just so happens that the A note leading up to the B flat note had just enough of the inflection of the lick that sounds like part of the melody that I'm trying to cut out. So here's the melody again. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song, sing a worried song. That would be reproducing the solo there with no licks, just trying to find the melody notes in the flow of the rolls. Now listen to the difference when I insert the lick. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. So, that lick had enough of the melody imprint in it, or similarities to the melody, sing a worried song, that I could actually use that as substitute for the melody. I'm watching the clock here, we're getting low on time. So, if you do that for any, especially vocal song, you can find licks, and uh, we can just keep going on and on about licks. What you need to do is study the standard vocabulary of scroll licks and try to use those in your solos. But if you want to make the solo still melody based but more exciting and more Scruggs, Scruggsy, if that's a word, then try to find and identify these licks that have similar mel melody fragments in them. So uh, next we'll look at just using licks as pure improvisation. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.